Hey guys, so I wanted to walk you through this uh, image classification assignment. Um, this is exactly the same as the one we did a couple weeks ago, uh, where I gave you each Sentinel and Landsat and even some planet imagery to, um, to do an image classification with. You went through and you made the classification schema, where you saw the different types of land covers that we were going to, to train with, and you, you did a little uh, training model. Except uh, this time I want you to do the same thing, but use that cloud-free uh, 2020, 21, uh, image that we, that we, uh, put together. Um, so I just want to walk you through that process. Um, it should be a little bit easier now because you already have that schema file, but, uh, wanted to, uh, w uh, walk you through that a little bit more. So, uh, first of all, um, so I have a new map here. Um, I'm going to go get that new image. So that's an imagery. It's a Sentinel mosaic. And it's the Sentinel 2020-21. Can drag that on. Might take a second to to download from uh, from OneDrive. Uh, so this added right. It doesn't look quite right. You guys probably remember that uh, we've got all the different bands to work with, um, and uh, this isn't the right band combination to display what it like a, a true color composite. So. Uh, this is showing one is red, green is two, and blue is three. Uh, we need to change that uh, to make it look more like a picture for us here. So I'm just going to set the red to be the red band, which is four, green to be the green band, which is three, and blue to be the blue band, which is two. So it looks a lot better there. Um, <clears throat> so uh, next, let's go ahead and actually add the the territories on there that's also in the master data there's the Jamiala territories drag that on uh, let's just give it something with an outline that's probably good I can see that nice and clear maybe a little bit darker there um, and so now we can start this image classification um, so the way we do this, we pick the image that we want to classify in the contents over here. We go up to the imagery toolbar and we start that classification wizard. Um, over here, we've got some setup for this classification. We do want to do a supervised classification, which means that we're going to do training samples. Object, uh, we, uh, this classification type, we want to do a pixel-based classification. It's going to look at every single pixel. And then we're for the classification schema, uh, in the first assignment you did, you used the default schema. Um, but this one, because you already made a schema, we can just browse to it. Um, and I've actually loaded up um, the one for this, uh, for this assignment here uh, to the master data, right? So uh, there it is in the, the master data, this GMIALA LCECS, the Esri classification schema file. Let's go ahead and load that up. Um, in fact, you could load your training samples uh, from your last assignment, but you know, this is a different year, um, so you really might not want to use that in this case. Um, I'll show you how to, to do this in the future. Um, every time you run a classification, it makes a new training sample feature class. So you can always just go grab the last one you did and kind of start uh, from that instead of starting from scratch. Uh, but we'll go ahead and start from scratch here. So, uh, oh, last step here is where do we want to save all this stuff? Um, um, image classification makes a bunch of little files uh, that can really clutter up a database. So um, I often recommend uh, making a database just for image classification. We can dump all the stuff in there um, instead of cluttering up your database. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, so we just need to make a new database. Um, so we can do that right from here. We just have to pick which folder we're going to put it in. I'll go ahead and put it in the Panamapping.js folder. Um, here's that other database. We'll just go ahead and make a new one right here. So you just go to new item, file as your database. Uh, I'm just going to call that image classification, GDB, 
and we'll use that one for classification. So it's going to dump everything in there now. Go next. Because we loaded up that ECS file, everything's here for us already. Um, and we just need to start training um, this model. So we need to train the computer how to recognize these different features. Um, you know, we train our own eyes using that red, green, and blue combination, that composite, because that's how we see it, th these as colors. But uh, when we train the computer, it's actually going to use the other uh, bands that we have to work with with Sentinel data. Um, so we have 11 different bands that it'll be using to, um, to recognize objects. So it's, uh, the computer is seeing more than, than we are in these images. Um, one little trick I can give you here. Here, we'll go ahead and start this, and I'll show you a couple little tricks here. Um, first of all, let's go ahead and um, just draw in some pastures here. This is all pasture. I, I like to use this little area right here. This is in Mamani. Uh, you guys have seen me do this before, but this area has a lot of the different uh, land cover types that we're going to be looking for in the rest of the image, so we can kind of zoom in. Uh, do a, a lot of our work here and it will kind of apply to the rest of the image which is nice um, so I'm just gonna whip in some pastures right here we're gonna just pick what the type is we're gonna use one of these tools I usually just use this freehand tool here and just start drawing in some pastures here okay just kind of get in here and pick a few um, I'm going to say this is probably Rastrojo. You can kind of recognize the color. Maybe the texture looks a little bit different. So those are probably like shrubs, right? Rastrojo. Um, not just kind of open pasture. Probably was pasture at some point and it's starting to grow back. Um, so there's some pasture right there. Um, I said this is probably Rastrojo over here. So we have that as shrubland. So I'm going to just identify that as shrubland. Um, probably, probably some of this over here too. I'll go ahead and say that's shrub land. All right, so you don't have to draw very big areas. And what it's doing is going to look inside of those areas. It's going to look at the spectral profile across all the different bands, and come up with kind of a, a profile for what pasture should should look like in the rest of our image. Um, uh, there's some fern over here, right? Lots of. This kind of like really bright looking fern stuff over here. Um, and uh, maybe some water. It's kind of obvious here. You don't have to do all these types. Um, those are the ones that we kind of have agreed on from uh, the Panamanian governments, uh, the Mi Ambiente data. But no, we don't necessarily have to use it all. Um, so I'm just going to do a few different types here. Now, okay, now we get into the secondary, the, the two forest types. Okay, um, you guys probably remember we've talked about this area a lot. That um, this used to all be cleared as pasture um, in like the early 2000s uh, when it was acquired um, by the preserve and um, they kind of started uh, reforesting this area. So this is relatively new forest as compared to some of this stuff, which is older forest. Um, and so that's kind of our category. So we have secondary going on over here. We've got some older growth forest going on over here. This is a, a lot of this is older growth too. Um, so let me show you a little trick so you can kind of uh, uh, figure out which one's older growth on which one's kind of newer forest. So we've got some uh, old imagery here. Remember Landsat's been going on since the 70s. Uh, we found a nice cloud-free image of 1986. Um, oops, wrong one here. So, so if we go in here to imagery, Landsat, look through these. I'm looking at this, this 1986 one right here. This is this Landsat 5. And drag that on. Might take a minute to load. And look at that. Um, you can see that all this area was cleared as pasture before. So you can see where 
the newer forest is, right? This is all going to be any any forest in these areas. It's all going to be newer. So um, I'll just grab this little swipe tool and we can kind of compare that, right? So all this forest right here, that's all newer. This thing over here, that's all newer. Look down here. There's some down here. This area right here. All right, so that's a good way to kind of look back in time and look at where the um, the newer forest is. Right? So I'm gonna um, I'm gonna use that here to um, to say that this is a newer forest. So I'll go back over here to my image classification wizard. Look at the I'm gonna say this is secondary forest. Um, just kind of jump back and forth here. See, like all this. Right? You can even draw on this if you want. I'm not drawing this area because this area looks a little bit different. This looks like might be some rustroho in here. Right? That's not kind of the same pattern that we're seeing in the rest of places. Um, this was also, jump back and look at this. This area right here is all new forest. Okay. Um, and then really all this stuff up here is going to be older growth or this mixed broadleaf. So I'm just going to put some big old circles over here. This is high up on the ridge. Um, hasn't been a lot of activity up there. so. Can't really anything kind of up in the mountains here is going to be older growth hasn't really been touched too much um let me just help you out with a couple of burn areas if i zoom out here right kind of in the middle you'll kind of notice this like gray area here these are kind of recent burns Um, so anyway, I, that's just a few that I put in. The more you put in, the smarter this thing gets. Um, you're training it how to uh, recognize these features. The more you train it, the better it's going to be. Um, you do need to, you know, give it some accurate locations, so some good locations for it to, to recognize. Um, you are you are going to get some weird things going on on some of these. Um, uh, residual cloud. This kind of, these are just like hazy clouds. <laughs> these uh, that are making it look like there's just kind of some snow on there. It's going to affect it a little bit, but those don't. It doesn't affect it as much as you think it might. Uh, you just draw a couple of circles around here. In fact, I'll I'll do that. I'll just say all this is old growth, and that should be enough to to clear most of that up. Um, yeah, I think we actually had some, like, some mangrove up here, too. Um, I'm not going to try to get into that right now. Um, but you can go back and look at some of the other layers we had, right? You got the Panama, uh, um, Mi Ambiente data, so we can kind of use that to inform our training samples here, right? So this, they say, this is all mangrove right here. So is this. So let's take a look and see, does this look different to us? Yeah, I think that looks pretty different over here. Then uh, the rest of this forest, I think that we can train the computer to recognize that stuff. So let's go add some mangrove over here. I think it should be able to recognize all that pretty well. Um, that's probably enough for now. Just to get this started, I think you guys kind of get the idea. Okay, so let me go to the next step here. We're going to click Next. We want to pick the classifier type here. This is the. There's lots of different algorithms for doing machine learning. 
Uh, we're going to use this one called Random Trees, which is the same thing if you've heard of Random Forest. It's the same thing. Um, I'm going to use that classification type. We're going to run that. Um, this So what this is doing is it's building a preview just for the current extent. Um, it's kind of a live preview, so you can move around, but it's not actually saving it for us. Um, so here's the result of our first classification. I put a lot more burn areas in here than it probably needs to. It's actually... Yeah. Which is okay. Um, we just need to... It just means we need to train it a little bit better. We need to tell it, look, that's not burn. That's... Um, that's just pasture right there. So actually, I'll, I'll go ahead and do that. So if I zoom in, say that's that's not a burn area. That's still just kind of pasture. We, so we can just go back to the previous page. All of our training samples are still here. I'm going to go over here to pasture. Kind of look back and see what it's, where it told me. So I'm just going to take that. Maybe grab another one of them. Okay. Go next. Run it. So again, the more you're zoomed in, the faster it'll go. Um, because it's just building a model for this area. Um, so once you're happy with kind of the preview, again, you can move around. You should move around, look at other areas, see how well it did. Um, maybe we need to you know, draw some new areas in. But obviously, we need to do that here. But you know, just looking at that first glance, just from a few training samples, it's really not too horrible, right? We've got a pretty decent looking model there. So the next step here is we'll just go to the next page here. This is we just give it an output name. That's fine. Um, it puts a timestamp on it for you. And go ahead and hit run. So now that's instead of building a preview, it's actually saving it to the geodatabase or to the output location, right? So this is putting it into that image classification geodatabase that we made. All right, that is done. Just to show you, I did speed up the video a minute. It took, a, it took about a minute. Um, uh, so we still have the previews here. So as you go through it, every time you go through that training process, it adds a new layer. <laughs> uh, you can go ahead and remove those as you as you go through. So, but this is the one that actually saved to our database. If you look at our classification in the image classification geodatabase that we made, there's the image, right? So we can add it to another map if we need to. And there's the training samples we used, right? Uh, crack that open just so you can see what it looks like. So it's got each of the different classification types in there with its value. So um, if we came back and want to start kind of fresh, um, and so we had to close this session out, and we want to kind of resume, I guess, uh, resume our session um, and not have to start from scratch, we can use those training samples. So let me show you how to do that real quick. Um, so I'm going to stop this session, this image classification session. Um, I'm going to say yes here. I'm actually going to kind of trick it to pretend we're going to start classifying this other image. Um, and then I'm going to come back to it. So, okay, so starting on this one again as if we're kind of um, resuming. Um, we want to like build some more training samples. So we're going to supervised classification, go to pixel-based again. We're going to say use that uh, that uh, Diamayala land cover, 
the output location will be the image classification geodatabase. And now we can find our training samples. Our training samples are going to be in our database, that image classification database, and they're sitting right there. Right. So now when we go to next, everything's loaded in here again, and um, we're not starting from scratch. Right? We've got all of the um, training samples that we already drew in the last session. Um, and again, we could go through and draw a few new things in here and kind of go through that same process again until we come out with a new uh, classified image. Okay. Um, so hopefully that helps. So um, what I'm asking you to do is do an image classification of this whole area. Uh, do it as as good as you can. Um, and then I want you to make a map layout of that. Um, and then I actually want you to submit your training samples. So what I'll do is then take all the training samples, I'll kind of review them, um, but uh, put, all, put all the training samples together and make like a combined class model using all of those training samples, um, which I think will be uh, pretty cool. Um, so the way you're going to send me this, okay, so again, this the training samples are in this image classification database. If you're not seeing them, you might need to refresh it. There's, I've done it twice now, so there's the second one. Um, <clears throat> go ahead and add that to the map. We're just going to share that as a layer package. You don't need to have any symbology or anything like that. I just need the polygons. Uh, we want to save that package to a file. Um, go ahead and put this into your OneDrive folder. Okay. Um, and then you know, give it a name. Uh, probably put your name on it. It'll tell me that in Canvas too. But go ahead and put your name on it. Training samples and then maybe your name. Um, and then go to package and it will make a little lpkx file for you and that's what I want you to turn in okay so that's what you'll submit to canvas um, so I can get a copy of all of those uh, training samples all right guys uh, good luck with this um, go ahead and uh, send me a message on teams if you have any questions any problems I'm happy to help I'll be gone for the weekend but uh, kind of we'll look again at all that on, on Monday or Tuesday so Good luck, guys.